On October 3, 1849, a journalist of Baltimore's local newspaper, Joseph Walker, went to a tavern. When he was approaching the building, he saw a man lying in a gutter. Walker approached the man to bring him to his senses. He was wearing dirty clothes, looked bad, and was mumbling something. Joseph asked what his name was. The man replied, My name is Edgar Allan Poe. All scary and mysterious things, detective novels, and science fiction originate from Edgar Allan Poe. He invented a brand new genre that inspired thousands of writers and directors to create frightening and fascinating stories. He's one of the most famous authors in the world. But unfortunately, his life was dark and dramatic. And the end of his life is as dark and mysterious as his stories. Poe was born in a family of theater actors in 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts. The first tragedy of his life happened when he was only two. He became an orphan at that age, since his mother had passed away and his father had left the family. A couple from Richmond, John and Francis Allen, took the young boy as a son. John was considered Edgar's foster father. John Allen worked as a merchant, earned good money, and provided Edgar with an excellent education. Poe also entered the University of Virginia, where he liked gambling. One day, Edgar lost a lot of money. He couldn't repay the debt, and his foster father refused to help him. Because of his debts, Poe was deprived of funding and taken to Richmond, where another personal tragedy happened to him. The young writer fell in love with a beautiful girl, Sarah Elmira Royster. Edgar wanted to marry her, but she chose some other guy and got engaged to him. This broke Edgar's heart, and perhaps that was a strong impulse to start writing. Poe loved the British poet Lord Byron and wanted to earn money through poetry and short stories. At 18, Poe moved to Boston and published his first book, Tamerlane and Other Poems. This work didn't bring him any money. It didn't receive distribution and wasn't even reviewed. Many historians doubted this book's existence, but they found a copy in the British Museum in 1876. According to the records, there were about 50 copies of Tamerlane and other poets in total, and only 12 are left nowadays. Experts of rare books consider the first book of Edgar Allan Poe to be one of the most valuable copies of American literature in the 19th century. In 2009, this book was sold at auction for over $662,000, and the previous copy of this instance was sold for $225,000. But Poe didn't get a penny for the book. He fell into debt, had a negative lifestyle, and continued to write short stories. It didn't last long since Poe went into the army, where he served for two years. After that, Poe went to New York. This time, he got a job as a critic for a local magazine, where he wrote a lot of reviews on other writers' stories. During this job, Poe created a style of harsh criticism in literature. But he also wrote his own poems, and one day, he succeeded. In 1845, Poe wrote his most famous poem, The Raven. This is a story about a man who experiences unrequited love and is chatting with a talking raven on a dark evening. The poem made Edgar a famous poet. The Raven was published in almost all magazines and newspapers of the country. People recognized Edgar Allan Poe on the streets and quoted his poem. The High Society of New York invited him to private clubs. Poe became famous finally. He was an international success. He had the fame any writer may want, but he still didn't have much money. He received from $9 to $15 for The Raven and a fee of about $120 for published editions. By the way, Edgar was the first American author who managed to live off the money he earned with his writing. 15 bucks wasn't much even back then. But the main thing about this success was that it gave him a chance to move forward with his career. Even though he finally started earning money, he still struggled to support himself, not to mention his family. Plus, as he had a bunch of debts, he had to give most of this money to the people he owed. By the beginning of 1846, things got worse for him. For starters, he lost his full-time job as a literary critic. The magazine he worked for went bust, and Poe was again left without money. His main source of income was lecturing. The people who attended them were delighted with the bright and bold performances of the writer. He criticized the unfair literary business and many writers of his time. He also held impressive poetry evenings. 
The reviews of Poe's performances were always good, but for some reason, the popularity of these lectures was dwindling, along with the price of the tickets. Poe, with his wife and her mother, moved to the Bronx, where yet another tragedy happened. Virginia Poe, the writer's wife, passed away at age 24. They say Edgar Allan Poe never managed to emotionally recover from this loss. Poe proceeded with his lectures and short stories. He also wanted to get married again to fill the void inside his heart. Perhaps that's why he was still a frequent visitor to taverns and bars. On September 27, 1849, Poe boarded a steamer in Richmond, Virginia, bound for Philadelphia. He had been hired to edit a collection of poems by an American poetess. What happened in the next six days is still unknown. But on October 3rd, Dr. Joseph Snodgrass, who knew the writer, received a letter from a Baltimore local newspaper journalist, Joseph Walker. He wrote that he had found a man in dirty clothes in a gutter. The man looked upset and said his name was Edgar Allan Poe. Dr. Snodgrass was surprised since Edgar was supposed to be in Philadelphia and editing poems. Dr. Snodgrass immediately went and found Poe in the tavern. His eyes were empty, he was saying something unintelligible, and he was wearing someone else's clothes. The doctor immediately sent him to the hospital. Poe didn't come to his senses. He was muttering something incomprehensible and couldn't explain what had happened to him. Dr. John Moran was the only person who communicated with the writer in the last hours of his life. On October 7, 1849, Poe passed away. Dr. Moran was never able to make an accurate diagnosis. According to one version, the writer had rabies. In the 19th century, this disease was common. It causes confusion and hallucinations, but there are inconsistencies in this version. People infected with rabies are afraid of water. Poe had no problem with this. Yeah. Another version says Edgar was attacked by Sarah Royster Shelton's brothers, who didn't want their sister to marry the writer. He could suffer a severe injury and damage his brain. But why was he wearing someone else's clothes when he was found? Edgar called the name of some Reynolds several times on his last night. But this man was never identified. In 2006, scientists analyzed Poe's hair and found that Edgar had elevated but not critical arsenic levels. This substance causes heart problems and other diseases, but it didn't become the main reason for Edgar's passing. Also, the analysis showed that not long before the fateful day, the mercury level in the writer's body jumped by 264%. Mercury can cause hallucinations and confusion, which explains the writer's strange behavior. These heavy metals were harmful to him, but they weren't the reason for his bad ending. One of Poe's biographers claimed that someone might have robbed the writer near the tavern where he was found. There's still no exact answer. Edgar Allan Poe's passing from life seemed as mysterious as his literary works. Sadly, one of the creators of detective, science fiction, and horror genres didn't receive decent money for his work. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.